Good morning dear children. Today once again we are back to our SS class. Today we will discuss the second chapter of geography that is maps. How they help us. So under this chapter we are going to learn some important point that, that will be what is a map. Map compared with globe. Types of maps. Components of maps. And plans and sketch. So let's start with maps. A map is a representation of the earth's surface or a part of it. On a flat surface according to a scale is called a map. Let's proceed to the next. That is a map compared with a globe. So a map has some advantages and disadvantages as compared to a globe. Maps cannot be as accurate as globes. A globe is a small model of the earth. A globe is round in shape as you can see here in the picture. So it is quite easy to show the shape and size of the continents and ocean on the globe quite accurately but these things cannot be shown accurately on a map because it is drawn on a flat surface as given here in a picture as it is quite impossible to flatten a round shape completely so the northern and the southern portion of the earth are scratched out of uh, proportion on a map but maps have special advantages of their own how they can be carried and handled easily okay and they can be collected together in a book form when maps drawn on a small scale are put together in a form of a book it is called an atlas some features as landform roads railways towns and villages etc can be shown better on maps as compared to a globe all right now men try to draw them many centuries before the birth of christ the earliest map known as earliest map known to us was made in about 2300 bc it was drawn on a clay tablet this is a clay tablet so as the time passed on maps began to be made on a scientific lines okay the scientific so the science of map making is known as cartography so uh, babylonians drew them on clay tablets egyptians used metal plates and eskimos used animal skin today maps are drawn on computers these maps are accurate and improved it may be mentioned that ptolemy and egyptian geographer contributed a lot in making map drawing a science so he was perhaps the first to show the north line at the top of his map as you can see here in a picture figure 7 17.1 he was a egyptian geographer who contributed a lot in making a uh, map drawing a science and he was perhaps the first to show the north line okay that arrow north line at the top of his map now next is types of maps so we have three types of maps here that is political map physical maps and thematic maps so let us discuss one by one so the first is political map what is political map political maps indicate state and national boundaries capitals and major cities okay as here yeah, as here it's written in your book that um, maps may be drawn to show different states and countries of the world which uh, with their boundaries are called political map and the next is physical map physical map that uh, is shows the physical features of an area such as mountains rivers and lakes are called physical maps and um and which also drawn to show physical features of the earth such as river rivers oceans mountain plateaus plains etc are called physical map as i told you now next is uh, the thematic map this is thematic map so what is thematic map maps that are made to represent particular information like the climate tourist places parks and centuries etc are called thematic map or let's say the um, map which represent a particular theme of topic like weather condition, vegetation, industries, climate zones, etc. are called 
systematic map okay so maps are also used to explain historical events such as a war spread of a civilization or an important voyage maps may be drawn to show a whole area as shown below a village a town and a district as a state or a country here this is a components of map maps all maps have three main components or pillar namely direction distance and location as you can see here um the directions distance and locations are given here uh, uh, regarding uh, mohan's house as as you can see here in a picture and next we have directions on the map so uh so if someone asks you which is the uh, east direction you can very easily do so by pointing out towards the rising sun isn't it so now if you stand with your face towards the rising rising sun your back will point towards the west okay and your right hand towards the south and your left hand towards the north but on the maps the directions are shown with the help of an arrow usually drawn on the right hand margin of the map the tip of the arrow is marked n which means that is that it is pointing towards the north if the north direction is known you can very easily find out the other three directions namely south east and west called the four cardinal directions okay now with the help of these cardinal directions you can uh, very easily find out the intermarry intermarry direction such as northeast that is ne southeast as e or sw southwest or the nw that is northwest let's proceed to the next that is distances on the map directions and distances play an important role in maps just as directions are shown on maps with the help of an arrow so are the census shows with the help of a scale the scale is often given just below the map as given in a figure 17.4 by scale we mean a measuring line on a map which help us to find correct distances uh, between various points on a map it is in a scale there is always a proportion between the dimension of the map and the actual areas they represent for example a scale given in figure 7 17.2 shown one uh, that is one centimeter is equal to 100 meters which means one centimeter on the map represent 100 meters in equal sorry actual measurement on the ground maps can be drawn to any scale that is a millimeter or a centimeter to represent a kilometer a hundred kilometers or a thousand kilometer or even more okay so this is the figure uh pick of figure 17.4 as you can see the linear the linear scale so um so our next topic is use of symbols in maps so it is not always possible to show the actual shape and size of different features of certain things such as of a building, a dam, a tree, a mountain, a valley or a plateau etc. So we use symbols to represent these features. The use of symbols makes the map clear, clearer and easier to read. They also make the drawing of a map such uh, much quicker and easier. There is there is some short of agreement all over the world regarding the use of certain symbols this uh, these commonly used symbols are called conventional symbols conventional symbols are often used in survey maps sometimes colors are also used to show certain physical features for example oceans and water bodies are shown in blue color plants in green color a plants in yellow and mountains in browns likewise snow on hills is shown in white conventional symbols as you can see here in a picture uh, symbols are given here conventional symbols road symbols are given there footpath river well line unlined tank 
spring, swampy ground, trees, grassy land, dam, bridge, graveyard, oil well, camping ground, and railway broad gorge and metal gorge and railway station, temple symbols are given there, church, port, village, huts, post office, telegraph, telegraph office, and high height is given here. Uh, triangulated and benchmark and rest house police station and battlefield so conven conventional symbols are very important in map making they make the um, drawing of a map much quicker and easier they also help a layman to read the map easily now next is plans Sometimes when we are required to show a small place in great details, we draw a plan, okay? Listen carefully. Sometimes when we are required to show a small place in great details, we draw a plan. A plan is an outline drawing of a building or a room or a small area such as a shopping or a housing complex or simply a classroom. We can draw a plan of Mohan's classroom in this plan. Which, uh, as you can see here in a figure 17.6 plans of Mohan's classroom. Uh, so, in this plan, the scale used, used is much bigger than the one used in the preparing a map. So, here in figure 17.6, you will see the arrangement of desk, the teacher's tables, as well as the doors. So, windows, the cupboard, and the back, uh, sorry, the blackboard, the scale used is one centimeter. Is equal to one meter in this way you can also draw a plan of your own classroom or any other room of your school or your home okay so next is sketches we can get exact information from the plans only if they are drawn to a definite scale but if we have only to convey a rough idea of a place or position of an idea or a building we may draw a quick sketch without using a scale so sketch leaps much to one's imagination as it does only sorry it does not convey the correct uh, proportion between different pictures and now look at the uh, look at figure 17.7 uh, sketch showing location of Mohan's house. It shows the location of Mohan's house. Mohan was in, invited his friend Shyam on his birthday. Shyam has never been to Mohan's house before. Okay, First, Mohan had tried to tell the location of his house through verbal in, uh, intro, instructions. He said, after you come out, uh, come out of the school gate, take a turn to the right and you will reach the main road. Then take a turn to the left and walk some distance and you will, you will reach a temple. Walk past the temple and soon you will see a row of plates. There is a road crossing from, the, uh, from there. You take a turn to the left and walk a few steps till you reach the market. My house is just at the other end of the market. As you know, all this instruction may not help Siam to reach Mohan's house. He may take a wrong turn somewhere and never reach Mohan's house. But if Mohan draws a sketch map of the area as shown in figure 17.7, Siam will have a little difficulty in searching his house as all the details are given here as you can see here. In figure 17.7. Last topic, how to study a map. A map is drawn to give an accurate idea of the distances, directions and other features. In a map, you will see an arrow mark uh, with its tip marked and this is called the north line. It will enable you to find the other directions on the map. Sometimes in a map, this north line is not given it should not cause any confusion or difficulty because by convention and practice the top of a map is always taken to be north okay with the help of the north line you can tell the direction of mohan's house from the school so at the bottom of the map there is a measuring line or a scale it helps you to measure distance between two places 
you have to measure the distance between two places and then with the help of the scale you can find out you can find out the actual distance for example to measure distance between diopur and bipur in figure 17.8 so it is easy if we have to measure the distance between Diopur and a railway station. We have to add distances from Diopur to Birpur and from Birpur to the railway station. So likewise, this chapter is ended up here. So let us know that line on a map which help us to know correct distance between various points on the map is called a scale of the map. The scale is a very important in map making. Without it, we cannot draw a map correctly. So it's uh, it is considered as the one of the most one of the most important pillars of the cartography. And let us learn from this chapter that about the map and what is map and how map compared with globe and we read types of map political physical and the thematic map components of maps and plans and sketch so we have done all the exercise from our book uh, under this chapter what is whatever is given here we have done that so your homework will be uh, from page number 129 uh, formative assessment number one and two number one give the meaning of the following conventional symbols okay so some symbols are given here you have to check it out this from your book and write down the correct con conventional symbols for the following and fill in the missing letters in the following words from the hint provided as first one is uh, dash t dash a s that is a book of maps and number one, instruments by which we can find out directions, measurements, processes given below a map. On a map, it is shown as. So all the answer you will get from this chapter itself. So study well and prepare well for the exam. Take care. Bye.